Que tu Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For giving us opportunity To assemble here this evening To continue with our tafsir We ask him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To continue showering his blessings Upon the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May he Allah extend his salutations Blessings Upon the household members of the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ashabihi The companions of the prophet Muhammad Wa alayna ma'ahun ajma'een And on the generality of Muslims We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To bless all our masters May Allah continue to be with them All our tutors All our teachers who taught us how to read and write from both sides, from right and left. Those who taught us how to read Quran, how to read Hadith, how to read anything that has to do with Islamic studies. May Allah reward all of them. From the left, for those who taught us how to read even Western education and other branches of knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of them. For those who are still alive among them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this, this life easy for them. For those who have gone, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a gender to free those. All our parents who are still alive, we must remember to pray for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of them. Amen. We ask him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of everything. May he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make this life easy for those who are still alive among them. For those who are passed away, may Allah forgive their shortcomings. And grant them a dinner to Fredos. Bidai Nabijina Muhammadin, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We pray for Nasfat. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala continue to keep Nasfat intact, starting from the BOT. May Allah. Continue to be with Baba Bijay Nabina Muhammad, our father. The Council of Elders, may Allah continue to be with all of them. The Mishnah Board, starting from our own Sunnah Mishana Chief Imam of this great mosque, uh, Fadila to Sheikh Sarafuddin Abdul Salam Aliaga. Adam Allah Hayatahu Afisa wa Ahu Asan Allahu Akibatahu Starting from him down to all the assistance missioners in FCT We pray for all the missioners across the world May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to be with every single one of us We join Nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We pray for all our mothers, the women wing, may Allah continue to be with them. Our mothers who are cooking for us, may Allah reward them for that. Mijai Nabina Muhammad, we must remember to pray for a secretive of Nasfat. May Allah continue to keep them intact. The Ramadan committee, starting from the chairman of Ramadan committee, may Allah continue to be with him. Mijai Nabina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we must pray for our youth, all the youth of Nasfat. Nasfat's youth, may Allah continue to be with all of us. Mijai Nabina Muhammad, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the members, all the members, may Allah reward all of us. Bijay Nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, in continuation with the topic of this year, Tafsir. A su'ubatun, su'ubatun, difficulty, dealing with difficulty, that is our topic of this year. An Islamic perspective. How can we deal with all difficulties? All the difficulties we are passing through, we are experiencing the difficult, the difficulty time. How can we deal with it? This is the topic of this year Ramadan, inshallah, 2024. And our chief imam has started discussing about this topic. He has told us the definition of the topic. He has told us a lot about the, the word of Su'uba. Su'uba. He has given us different interpretation of the word of difficulty. In the previous uh, tafsir, we have been told the meaning of su'ubat, difficulty, mashakkotun. That is another word for it. Al-balahu, shiddatun. That is another word for it. Usiru, usiru, dikku, dikku. That is another word for uh, difficulty. We have so many and different words of uh, when we say something is difficult. Alhamdulillah, we have been told, you know when we say difficult, something is difficult, difficulty, hardship. That is also hardship. Al-balahu, calamity. When someone is, is placed on al-balahu, trial, a trial by Allah is part, is, is part of uh, difficulties, part of difficult, difficulties that we are experiencing in life, al-balahu, al-khawfu, al-khawfu, is one of the, uh, another inter interpretation of uh, difficulty. Ala khawfu naqsu min al amwal wal amfus loss of wealth and and what and, and the soul. It's another interpretation. So our Imam has told us all this in the previous uh, tafsir, and also. It was stated in the previous tafsir where the Imam quoted verses. Some verses from the Quran where we can find the word of Usir. Usir in the Quran al Karim. We are been told that uh, we should share Surah Al Baqarah. Surah Al Baqarah, that is Quran 2, verse 185, where Allah discussed about the uh, also, difficulty. When Allah is talking about Sharu Ramadan, Allah says, Yuridu Allah bikumul yusra wa la yuridu bikumul usra. So, this is one of the verses quoted by our Imam in our previous discussion. Down to another surah, Surah Al Kaf. Surah Al Kaf, that is Quran 18, verse 73. Imam also quoted a verse in that surah to Kahaf that talk about the usru. That is another verse in our previous discussion. Down to surah to Talak. 
Surah Al-Talaq. Imam also quoted Surah Al-Talaq, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala discussed about uh, Al-Usr in the Quran. That's Quran 65, verse 7, in Surah Al-Talaq. Quran 65, verse 7, in Surah Al-Talaq. Allah also discussed about uh, about Usr. that talks about usru, hardship, hardship in the Quran and Kareem. Uh, all these verses have been interpreted, explained to us in the previous taf tafsir. The last one that was quoted by Imam, by our Imam, is uh, Surah to Inshirah, Alam Nasra, Surah to Inshirah. Which is Quran 94. Allah. That's Quran 94, verse 5 to verse 6. These are four verses, four different verses from different places from the Quran and Kareem. Talk about Usru, Arshi. And we have other verses of the Quran numerous verses from the Quran where Allah talks about hardship. Allah uses it in another way. Sometimes uh, there's a place where Allah says, Ala al-kafirina asira. Asira. So there are so many places where Allah uses uh, the, the word of uh, Usra. But this four one mentioned al usir hardship. And the Imam has discussed about it. Alhamdulillah, as we have been told that inshallah this tafsir will be taking it one after the other. We firstly mentioned where we can find the word of Usuru in Quran. Then after that, we are promised that inshallah we tell ourselves the hadith, a hadith in Nabawi, the prophetic statements that talk about Usuru, hardship before we now move to how the prophets, all the prophets of Allah, messengers of Allah, how they went through the hardship in their life, how they went through the persecutions in their life. Inshallah, we take it one after the other, then we we'll later tell ourselves how we can deal with hardship time. How can we deal with it? What are the solutions? What are the solutions? What are we expected to do when we are going through hardship time, hardship period, when we are going through uh, difficulty in our life? How can we handle it Islamically? Inshallah, all this will be uh, addressed in our tafsir, this year tafsir. Let me quickly go to start with hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have quoted the meaning of uh, hardship in the Quran. Then we have so many hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that tell us that Muslims must prepare. You must prepare yourself for hardship in life. 
you must prepare yourself for hardship. Look at the verse. Allah says, "For inna ma al usri yusra, inna ma al usri yusra." What's the meaning? For inna ma al usri, indeed, indeed, hardship. You can see, hardship goes with is. You can see, it go with what is. The, the verse didn't say that there will be hardship, uh, sorry, there will be ease after hardship. Ma'a. I like use the word of ma'a. In any hardship, with hardship, there is relief. There is ease. It means that they are going interrelated. They are going interrelated. They are going together. Interwoven, you know, in hardship. When you look at this very well, when you are going through hardship, you will later find ease in it. When someone is going through a challenge, a particular challenge, a trial, you may not you may not take note of that, but when you take a, you take note of it very well, you later find a good result, even from that hardship. Hardship makes someone to be strong. So if you don't go through it, you may not be what? Be strong. So in any battle, there's what? There's a good. Now, let's go to Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that interprets for in Ma'ala Usiri Yusra. In Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. The Hadith, this Hadith, uh, from the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet said, La lan, lan, lan yadu liba usiru yusirayin. No hardship will be defeated by two is. You say, by two is. What's the meaning? It means that there's no 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 condition is what is permanent. That's the good interpretation of the of the of the hadith. No condition is what is permanent. If you are going through hardship now, it will continue. And if you are in good, you are in the stage of happiness. You are making it. You are happy. Everything is going fine for you now. Don't expect continuation. Don't expect it to be continued. It will continue like that. Line Yagaliba Osiro Yusarain. Ibn Mas'ud, on the authority of Ibn Mas'ud, the son of Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Naam. Ibn Mas'ud, one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, reported this hadith that I swear with Allah, whose my son is in his hand. If 
the hardship is in inside the mountain or inside the stone is under something hidden. What the prophet is saying here is that no matter how the also hardship is hidden somewhere if that hardship is dealing with someone someone is going through the hardship in his life the east must find it no matter how where that hardship is hidden the east will be looking for a way to find it because it must overcome it. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. It means that because the Hadith said, Lain ye deliba, usiru, yusrayin. It's not possible for someone to remain happy forever. And it's not possible for someone to remain sad forever because no hardship will be defeated with two E's. It means that two E's will not come after other. At the same time, you must experience easy in time, then hardship will come, then you experience easy in ease in time, hardship will come. That is how Allah created everything. Nothing is permanent in life, even our life. Yes, even our life is not permanent. So nothing is permanent. Happiness is not permanent. Sadness is not permanent. What, whatever you are getting now is not permanent. Your, li your life is not permanent. La yadum. That is why the Prophet Muhammad, in another hadith, that has to do with uh, that has to do with hardship, difficulty in life. We are quoting some hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet said, "لا يسأل البلاه بالمؤمن والمؤمنات صلى الله عليه وسلم." Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet said that. Ma yasalu al-balahu bil-mu'min. The trial, the hardship, the difficult, difficulty. La yasalu. It will continue visiting a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as we are living. Bil-mu'min. Both male and female, it will be visiting us, it will be visiting, visiting you yourself. You'll be experiencing balahu, trial by Allah. Allah will be placing you on a trial. You can see. Not only you, even though you'll be experiencing a trial, a test, through your children. Wamalihi, you'll be experiencing a trial. Allah will place you on a trial through all the properties Allah gave to you, your wealth. In that hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be experiencing a trial by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. Yourself, 
your family, your, your wealth, your properties. Prophet Atta, Yelkullah. We continue experiencing it like that until we meet Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it means that difficulty is something that all the believers must be expecting in life. Look at this, this of the Prophet Muhammad. You should be expecting it all the time. Don't rely on that enjoyment. The enjoyment that you are experiencing now is from Allah, but it can remain forever. It can be changed at any time. لا ما يزال البلاه بالمؤمن ولا إيه ولا بالمؤمنات وما له. So look at it. That hadith is telling us that Allah can test us through ourselves. So I can force it. Someone can lose his part of his properties. We can lose a soul. Even our sight. We can be tested by Allah through ourselves. That is number one. And, Allah, and the prophet said that it's not limited to that too. It's not limited to ourselves alone. Even all what we have around us can be tested but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your children, in that hadith, your children, Allah can test you through your, your children. Because he knows that we love our family most. That is why Prophet knew that we love our family most. That's why he said, wa waladihi wa malihi. There are two major things we love most in life. Family and wealth. That's what Prophet said. Be expecting a trial. A trial of Allah through all these things you love. Through all these things you love. Can see there are so many verses that talk about the trial, the test of Allah. But now we are bringing some hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet said, "Isa ahab Allahu abda ibtalahu li yismaa tadruhu." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When Allah fall in love with a servant of ease. When Allah loves someone, if Allah loves you most, if Talahu, he will place you on a trial. If Talahu, sometimes he will make the life to be difficult for him or her. If Talahu, Allah will test him with action. If Talahu, Allah will let him go through Hardship time. Ibtalahu. Liyasima'a tadabruhab. So Allah will do that just for him to know whether you will continue calling upon him or not. Just to know whether you continue serving, serving Allah, worshiping Allah, or you put a stop to it. 
Allah places us on a trial to know the level of our faith, our iman. A lot of people, when they are going through a trial, that's when they say, they will not say, ah, it's like this, uh, you know, I have to put a stop to this uh, dua, this prayer I'm doing, you know. It's like I'm not seeing any, any sign, any impact, any benefit. It's like I'm not seeing anything through this prayer I'm saying. Let me put a stop to it. A lot of people believe that. A lot of people will be saying that. Not know that Allah is testing you. You want to know that once you are granted with your request, when you get that thing you are requesting for, maybe you just put a stop to it. You stop calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why you want to know whether you can sustain it. So that is why sometimes Allah delays the acceptance of our prayer, the acceptability of the prayer. Naam. Reading the Quranic verses. And we have the scholars also who are also trying to interpret the Quranic verses with their own statements. So let's get it clear that we have so many hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that talks about usuru, that talks about balahu, that talks about hardship, difficulty in life. We have so many hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam isa ahab allahu abda ibtalahu li yasma'a tadurruhahu don't say when you are going through a trial by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you now see it as an end of the road no why me a lot of people will say why me but when you are receiving blessings when you are re receiving Allah's blessings, so many blessings from Allah, favors, it does not say why me. Why it does not say why me when you, are, when you, you know, when you wanted something and you got it, Allah granted you, and you not say why me, and you, ne you knew that there are so many people around you that who are looking for the same thing and they could not get it. We have so many people. You know, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, he has given them to us as a trial. That's why Allah used the word of Amma, Izama bi talahu. Even though the money you have is a test. Whatever you get in life is a what? Is a test. You get it, is a test. You don't get it, is a test. Allah says, "For amalin sanu ida ma bitala wa rabbu wa akramahu." When we place 
a man, when we place someone on a trial by blessing him, when we bless you with something, and that thing we bless you with is a trial, but when we give it to him, for when when he is is found happiness in what Allah has given to him, even though it's a trial. Allah has given him money. Allah has given him a uh, blessing with children, good children. Allah has given him so many things. And he now finds happiness in all this. Fa'akramahu, he feel honored. Wa'na'amahu. So he feel blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ah, this is a blessing from Allah. That is when you see men will be saying that. You'll be saying, for your cool me, Akram. Oh, ah, God bless me. I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. I'm favored. God honor me. God ah, gave me this. He gave me money. He gave me good children. You no, know, I have houses. I have this. I have that. For your cool me, Akram. We have two interpretations for these two verses. The first one is that there are many people who are blessed with good things, with goodies of this life. And when they find themselves in that position, they'll be saying that, yes, I'm blessed. Such a person who was blessed yesterday, who was blessed yesterday with so many things, and when Allah just reduced little from his wealth, when Allah placed him on a, on a trial, when Allah said, ah, yesterday, 2022, you are blessed, you have this, you have that. But so, so, so time, 2023, when Allah reduced it, you know, if when he find it so difficult for a little time, that is when he will say, be saying that, ah, what is this? He has forgotten yesterday when he was blessed, when he had everything. He will start complaining. He'll be complaining that, ah, what, what kind of thing is this? Forgetting that. Allah says that in Nama Allah Osiri. So have you forgotten that Allah says in Nama Allah Osiri Yusra? Hardship and ease, they go together. So when you experience good today, don't expect the same thing tomorrow. So that's why Allah says, Wa amma in Wa amma in Zama Talaba Kodara Alei Rizkom. When we limit, when we limit his wealth, he will feel embarrassed. That is Quran for us. And another interpretation for it is that we have so many people. We have among the servants of Allah. A lot of people have forgotten that Allah tests them. Allah is testing you with those things that Allah bless you with. He's expecting you to assist people from what Allah has given to you. Because it's a, it's a test. 
Many people, the only thing what consign them when they are blessed with that, for your cool rubbi, akramani, they will be, you know, prouding. Eh? Praising themselves. Ah, uh, no. Is there any billionaire that can, you know? Uh, nobody can contest with us. Uh, uh, the, uh, you'll be saying he's the only billionaire. No. Prouding, praising himself. We are so, instead of him to be thanking Allah, thanking Allah by saying Alhamdulillah, thanking Allah by assisting people around you. Wama Fakodara Alihi Fayakulu Rabbi. That's another interpre interpretation for that one is that we have a lot of people, the less privileged among us. But when you look at when you look around, you you check yourself very well, you will see where Allah favor you. That you you will have cause to, to thank Allah. Yes, you may not have money, but there are certain things that Allah has given to you. That if you think of them, you'll be praising Allah, you'll be thanking Allah. You'll be saying that, ah, why didn't I get money? Why didn't I get this? Why didn't I get that? So is that of them to be saying that uh, why, why is my life is like this? You, uh, there are so many, you know, billions, billionaire. Why wouldn't So inshallah, today we try to quote the prophetic statements that talk about uh, Isru, that talk in time, in, in lifetime. Uh, inshallah, we'll uh, raise the tafsir here for today, inshallah. Famani uh, Yatu, inshallah, the other day we'll be talking about it. We just try to talk about the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as a believer our life ad dunya mamlu'atun bil bala alayhi wa sallam subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik nash'adu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Subhanallah Subhanallah